Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the Books, your online librarians. And we are here with another Weekly Reads episode. We have a lot of books in this episode, so stay tuned because we have some awesome books in here. We have Star Wars, Emoji Movie, and a few other great ones as well. All the way from Top. middle reader through adult. Star Wars, the keepsake coloring book from Art of Coloring, illustrated by Katie Cook. This is a review copy from Disney and Lucasfilms Press. This is a must have for any kid. I think these pictures are really cute and they have really big heads, which is kind of fun. It is gonna be keepsake and perfect for all ages, but I would particularly recommend it for grades two through about five or ages seven to 10. Once again, this is a review copy from Disney and Lucasfilms Press. Beatrice Zinker, Upside Down Thinker. This is by Shelley Johannes. This book is super cute. Beatrice is very much an out of the box thinker, or in her case, she prefers her thinking being done upside down, and she does not fit very well into her family. They are right side up thinkers. And up until now, she's had a great teacher who's been very understanding of her quirks. But it's a new school year and her new teacher just thinks that's a bunch of nonsense and she should be right side up all the time. And so she's trying to balance figuring out how her unusualness fits into the new world she's in. And she gets meet some new friends along the way who tend to agree with her about being upside down and thinking. This would be great for those who like Clementine, Judy Moody, Judy B. Jones, that kind of book. This is a review copy from Disney Hyperion. I would recommend this for grades two through five or ages seven to 10. This is from Disney Emoji, the movie. Questions and quizzes to Disney-fy your world. This is a fun little quiz book. It's very visually friendly and I liked it because it has all sorts of questions to ask you about which princesses you are or which prince you are and it does it through emoji pictures. If you enjoyed the emoji movie or if you just plain love Disney, you'll wanna pick this one up. This is a review copy from Disney Press. I would recommend this for anybody who likes quiz books but particularly for grades two through six, <laughs> ages seven through about 12. This is Thornhill by Pam Smee. This is one of those books that is told half through the pictures, the full page pictures, and half through words or journal entries. From the pictures are a modern day tale. The words, the journal entries are from 1982. So this girl right here, her name is Ella, it's 2017, or it doesn't really say, so it's just now. And she has just moved into the house across the street from Thornhill. She can see Thornhill from the window in her room. And she doesn't have any friends, she's just moved here. And she sees this girl from the window and she wants to befriend this girl. She sees this girl at the abandoned Thornhill. Interesting, but what we know is that this girl is Mary. She is an orphan at Thornhill Institute for Children and mm -hmm. she's bullied, she has no real friends and she creates these puppets. But we know that Mary is from 1982. Mm. I'm gonna say suspense and horror. Yeah. It has these beautiful black and white drawings. And if you liked books like The Marvels or... Invention of Hugo Cabre. Yes. If you like Brian Selznick's books, this is the same style. You're going to like this book. And if you like books like Mary Downing Hahn, you'll probably like it too. It so, it's definitely a read-alike for Mary Downing Hahn. Yes, you have the two side-by-side -side stories, a 730 Lexile. They're interwoven very well. This book must have taken forever to draw. I'm gonna say grades four through eight or ages nine or 10 through 14. If you have a child who scares easily, maybe not. Especially or, if they get scared visually. It, it is that horror element, for sure. Or something lighter. Try Dis Disney Descendants School of Secrets, Carlos's scavenger hunt. This is one that's a little bit later in the series. There's a bunch of these little ones that have been written recently and we've reviewed a few others so check them out. This one, Carlos, he really wants to be a leader and his mom before he left to come to Oregon gave him this dog collar bracelet that he can put on his wrist that can control and influence people's minds into doing whatever he wants. In fact, make him do what he wants. This particular day coming up in Oregon is their school-wide kingdom-wide scavenger hunt. The scavenger hunt has a few things that are not so hard to find, like a glass slipper and a puppet made of wood. They have to take pictures of them. There are other things like getting grumpy to take a selfie. Yeah, good luck with that one. Or getting Lumiere to give up his gray stuff recipe. As Carlos and his group are doing the scavenger hunt, they get behind and they're supposed to get this train ticket 
the train that comes into Oridon. But they get distracted when this little boy is desperate for their help. And so they end up helping him and taking a selfie with him. Just because he really, the little boy really wants a picture with them. Well, things progress and he ends up having to use his bracelet. But is that cheating? Or will he f figure out how to be a leader on his own? This is great for fans of Descendants, and it's true to the characters of Descendants. You really get to know Carlos in this one. This would be great for grades 4 through 8 or ages 9 to 14. This is review copy from Disney Hyperion. Penelope March is melting by Jeffrey Michael Ruby. In this book, Penelope lives in a city on top of a glacier. In fact, it is the glacier. There is an old legend in their town of this evil shapeshifter who swears vengeance that she will come back and melt the whole glacier. Penelope, she meets this eccentric older gentleman who's Orin with a silent nine in his name. And he seems to know a lot about the history of, of this legend and what really goes into it. And he has some special cookies that give you vision powers. And her brother gets a hold of one. And he starts having these weird visions of basically their whole town melting and falling into the sea. Little creepy, yes. <laughs> But then every, all these things start happening that basically are causing all this chaos in the whole town and none of them seem to care. So it's up to Penelope. Now, this is a very fun mystery adventure with fantasy. What's really going on and is this evil shapeshifter real and is she back? But I recommend having a clue notebook with you because there's a lot of different clues along the way that make it a little harder to solve the mystery if you don't pay attention and write down the clues. But I like that kind of thing. Great it's book to teach close reading skills. Definitely a great book for teaching close reading skills and extrapolating information from what you learn as well. If you like Blue Belly yet, you'll definitely like this one as well because you get to solve the mystery along with the characters. Great adventure. I would recommend it for grades 4 through 8, ages well. 9 through 14. This is a review copy from Delacorte Press. Is this a book for readers with some better skills that need a challenge? Or is this something you could give a high-low? This is definitely one for those readers that read a little bit better but need more of a challenge. Alright. Lecture like readers could enjoy it, especially for like mysteries, but they may have little have to take a little bit slower. Okay. Balcony on the Moon, Coming of Age in Palestine. This is for grades seven and up or twelve and up. This is a nonfiction book. It takes place in Palestine in the 1970s. I'm gonna hope I say her name right. Ibstan Barakat is the author and the character. She wanted to be a writer and she keeps trying to pen pal her favorite author. All of a sudden she gets this mysterious visitor at school. He comes with a package for her, a present and a letter from the author and the author asks her to keep writing him. Her mother at the same time decides to pursue an education which is not typical especially as a married woman and she wants to pursue her dream. So you have the mother and the daughter both pursuing their dream at the same time which is really a neat position and the grandma can't read or write so she kind of is from an older generation where women can't read and write. This is a book about strong women who defy expectations and the father is hesitant but he decides to support them and his love for them basically goes okay we can deal with this it's an inspiring memoir and it encourages the reader to pursue their dreams no matter what hurdles they have to overcome sounds like it might be a read like for i am malala would you, say? you could read this yeah with the young reader young version readers version of i am malala it's a beautiful book and a great story so this is a review copy from kiss the book and farrar strauss Gro. i love this book Great nonfiction. This is what I like about it is too, is it's actually nonfiction that's on level. There's a, not a lot of this memoir style told as a story nonfiction for readers in this age group, and they need to read more of it because of the Common Core and the new standards for English. Sounds like it'd be a good bridge for those who too who aren't really into nonfiction because they like that more narrative style. Right, and you could have a fifth or sixth grader who reads at a high level, perfectly comfortable with this book. Spill Zone by Scott Westerfield and Alex Hovland. This is a first second graphic novel and I loved it. It took me a little bit to get into it. So this is a review copy from them as well. And this is about Addison or Addie and she is a photographer. She survives by taking pictures in the spill zone. We're not 100% sure what the spill zone is, but we know is that it has pretty much supernatural properties. The humans there are, have been turned into meat popsicles, basically, or like a zombie 
kind of creature. And her parents were in there when this happened. Her sister was too, but her little sister Lexa survived. They live inside the boundary of town where it's kind of most people that are there were grandfathered in. New people aren't allowed to move in. And this is her only way of supporting her little sister and taking care of them, but it's completely illegal. She rides into the spill zone and takes pictures, documents it, and she has people who buy her pictures and support them. Now, there's places where it's like a flat zone and then it's like these creepy rats. And then her sister has like this Raggedy Ann type doll. And we know that it's not quite normal and that it needs like recharged in the zone. We also know that Lexa makes her take the doll with her to protect her, but you don't know why or how. So we're still getting to know the characters in the story. Oh my gosh, I got to the end and I could not wait to read more. It is an amazing book. Scott Westerfield just does such a good job of keeping you on ed the edge of your seat and pulling you into this world and this story and I loved it. It's dark, it's twisted, it's... Very Scott Westerfield. You know that there's like some supernatural stuff going on. It's crazy and it's crazy good. I'm going to say there's just a tiny bit of language say at this point in this graphic novel series grades 7 and up or ages 12 and up. It will be interesting to see where the rest of it goes because first second is not always a company that keeps their books so PC or PG. So I'm not sure where the rest of the series is gonna go but right now I'm gonna say ages 12 and up or grade 7 and up. And I need book 2 like now. Okay, so I messed up one little thing. They're not meat popsicles, they're meat puppets. I don't know why I messed the two. Popsicles are frozen and puppets are like puppets. <laughs> so meat puppets is what she calls the, the dead but living zombie creatures in the spill zone. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is a review copy from Random House Audio and it is narrated by Will Wheaton, who is one of my absolute favorite characters from Star Trek Next Generation. So I was really excited to listen to it. She's a total Trekkie. So this book takes place in the future in the year 2039 is where it starts. James Halliday, who was born in 1979, dies and he leaves condition of his will. No future descendants or anything. So he says, I have hidden an Easter egg in my game Oasis. And if you can find it, you will inherit my whole fortune. This whole craze gets started over the Oasis virtual reality game. For those of you who don't know what an Easter egg is in a video game, that's where the author of the video game hides some special little trinket within the game for people to find. Now, six years later, nobody's found it. In comes Wade Watts, who he lives in, in this really poor part of town where they, they basically take double wide trailers and stack them on top of each other. It makes sense in the book. His mom's passed away. He's living with his not so nice aunt and her boyfriend who just steal stuff from him, including stuff he's supposed to use for school. Somewhere along the line, he found this really old car and he hid all his stuff in it. He keeps his Oasis VR game in there. That's also how you go to school in the future. And one day he finds the very first clue to the the billionaire's fortune. And suddenly he basically reignites the whole craze about finding the last clue to find the billionaire's fortune. Unfortunately, however, he also ignites some murderous characters who burn down his whole stacks neighborhood and he's homeless. He's trying to outrun these bad dudes while staying in the virtual reality game and keeping alive so he can find the last clue. So he meets Mrs. Gilmore and she was born in the 1980s. Now her background in the 1980s has a lot to do with James Halliday's game Oasis. The culture of 1980s is how he's going to figure out where this Easter egg is hidden. I won't tell you how, but this is an amazing adventure. I can see why they're making it into a movie and Will Wheaton just makes it even better. He has a very good narrative. Narration. He does a great job of keeping pace with the book and bringing to life the characters. Y'all will get drawn right into the story and I highly recommend it, especially on audio and listening to it before you see the movie. That's Ready Player One. There is quite a bit of violence in there, a little bit mature content. This is a review copy from Random House Audio. Grades 9 and up or ages 14 and up. Greek gods, hashtag squad goals. This is by Courtney Carbone. And this is a review copy from Random House. It is an OMG Classics book. So that's the series name. And it is funny. Basic introduction to your main Greek gods and a few peripheral characters and how they interrelate. This starts with Gaia and Uranus. Uranus, how do you want to say it? Is there a proper way to say it? I think it's technically Uranus. Uranus? That's how I've heard it it's pronounced. It's spelled like the planet. I know, I've heard it 
<laughs> pronounce that way. <laughs> okay. So you guys can debate that. Put it in the comments below what proper pronunciation we should be using. It gets into the Titans and the Lady Titans or the Titanesses. And the Cyclops and in Cyclopes. Cyclopes? They're yes. Cyclops. That is the Cyclopes. That is the plural form. We should have let the English major review this book. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> then you get into Kronos and Rhea. Am I saying that one wrong too? Nope. Okay. So <laughs> and then somehow you then they like to eat he likes to eat his children and then you have her and Zeus and Zeus being hidden and I saw one page in there where they were text messaging each other. Well the whole book is told <laughs> through like text messages and IMs and pictures. It's just really fun. Instant messaging. It's it's fun. It's a very quick read. It's funny. There's not enough background on any of these characters to be able to get through the Iliad or the, or the Odyssey, which you really do need to know your Greek characters for. Yes. But it will make kids laugh, and they like Greek mythology because they've read Percy Jackson, and those type of books. But it's also funny if you have the backgrounds here of the Greek characters, even if you don't have the correct pronunciations. There, there's a smaller moderate to moderate amount of language. This That depends on if you're considering little poop emojis as swearing <laughs> or... Um, Hardly. So if you consider text, like shortcuts like FML to be swearing, or LMAO or GTFO, then there is more language in this book. <laughs> so I'm going to say grades eight or nine and up, or ages 14 and up. One more YA book, and that is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This is a book told in verse that is about a very serious topic, much opposite of the last book. Grades eight and up, or ages 14 and up. It is urban fiction, very, deals with a very serious topic, which is gun violence, murder. There's some language, there's smoking, but mostly the violence. This entire book takes place in 60 seconds on an elevator ride. So, so seven floors, it starts top on the way down. On each floor, somebody from Will's past gets in. So Will's older brother was shot, murdered, and he thinks he knows who did it. So he is got, he's got a gun, he's going to take care of this. And there are rules. So he's gonna follow those rules, he's gonna get his revenge. So each floor again, someone from his past gets in. But the thing about each person from his past is they're all dead. Every last one of them is a victim of gun violence or gang violence. You can take that either way. Kind of both. They give him advice. He reviews his relationship with each character in the past. And of course the ending is in the lobby. I am not going to tell you the end and you can make your own assumptions about the ending, but it's it's a thinker. And I've talked to many people about this book who have also read it. It's powerful. Everybody agrees that it's powerful. It's di very different. It is it is a hard read. Like in some senses, the book itself isn't hard, but the content. The content and interpretation piece can be more difficult. It sounds very Timely? Yeah, especially with what's going on nationwide in the news and stuff like that. Yeah, hard, hard read in some cases, but I mean, an easy read and great for reluctant readers and high low, but definitely a book to think about. Especially if they're in an area where that's something that's prevalent right. in their life. Urban fiction is not the most common theme for books in the, my school area, my school's area, but I think they need to understand too just that not everybody lives in the same world that they do. And I think this helps in both cases. So if you're living in an environment like that, and if you're living in a completely opposite kind of environment, just Understand. that whole seeing things through other lenses piece that this age really needs and is so common in the literature right now. Jason Reynolds is a great writer and he wrote American Boys and I loved American Boys. Again, urban fiction and slightly more difficult read, simply again in context not in actual reading level. He's a powerful writer. Sounds like it might appeal to those who like the hate you give as well. Along with right, knowing what that book's about. Issues. Grades eight and up or ages 14 and up. Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. So Dr. Joe Dispenza is well known for his mixing of science, health, and medicine, as well as new age elements. In this book, he mixes quantum science, ancient traditions, new age science, as well as some other elements related to that to explore how you can become your highest self. He goes into a lot of detail and has a lot of diagrams are great for such things. 
I like how he uses diagrams to show you what happens in your brain when you use think certain types of thoughts or you meditate. And he explains not only biology, but other, in a way, people will understand it. This is a fantastically easy book to follow, and I would recommend it for anyone who's into self-improvement or new age or meditation or if you're a fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza. He also has some great meditations available through iTunes that you can check out as well. I'd say this is definitely nonfiction, and it mostly will appeal to adults, but if you have a high schooler who's interested in that kind of thing, they definitely would have the capacity to be able to read this book. Murder in Little Shenden by A. H. Richardson. This follows a couple characters, Inspector Burgess and he is from out of town, and he's been brought in to solve a case in Shenden with the help of two very amateur detectives, Sir Victor Hazlitt and Beresford Brandon. The murderer that has happened is Bartholomew Finch. He is the owner of the Bygone Era, which is a art shop. He's former MI5, and he has a little bit of a shady past after having been a part of MI5, and he winds up dead, feeling very clue-esque. You'll want to pick this one up if you like mysteries, but who did it? Was it the shy librarian who's new to town? The postmistress? The housekeeper? The vicar and his wife? Or is it someone we don't even know is in the picture? I just love the f how this book unfolds the mystery. This is another one that you may have to go back and read it a little bit or keep a clue journal, but it is worth the read and it's very well written and engaging. I love the characters and I highly recommend it for fans of mysteries and adventures. And I'd even recommend it for those who maybe liked Murder on the Orient Express. This is great for adults. And this is a review copy from the author. Oh. Really quick, I just wanted to show you guys the craft that Kira did with the teens this week, and we came home and made another one that I'm gonna take to the library. These, we just took an old paperback book that we were getting rid of, and it's a Christmas hedgehog origami. It's really simple and fast, and you simply, each page, you fold it in half, and then you bend the two corners down. Fold the page in half, you tuck it inside the seam or the spine, and then you just fold the two corners down into triangles. You do that for every page, and then you just trim the book to match. This was a book from Discard that they did this with the teens with. And the number of pages determines how fat your little hedgehog is. This My one's guy, about 100 pages. Mine was about 240. It got a little tough towards the end. Colored. Yeah, we had, took both of us to, look, to fold the last few yeah. pages. It, we just colored his little nose in, his eyeballs. We made a little hat out of a pom-pom and some fabric, and she put feet on this one. Anyways, it was super cute and super easy, and so I'm gonna take mine and put it in the library. And I'll probably stick mine up with the Christmas decorations at the library. Yes. Anyways, real fun. It's kind of fun to have a job where crafts are part of your job. And this is a go. super easy one. I think even you could do it with, with a little bit upper elementary as well, but they may require a little assistance with the cutting part. These are very popular with the teenagers, and I've had a few people come in the library and make comments about it while I had it there. I highly recommend it as an easy craft it took to do. About what, an hour? An hour. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you hear about more videos. And if you share other people who hear about them and hear about book reviews that might help them or help someone they love develop a love for reading or just find their next book. Let us know if you decide to make one of these. Put it in the comments, share a picture, maybe, I don't know. We would love to see them. So until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.